Today we're speaking to uh, Gary Arndt from Everything Everywhere Travel Blog. Um, you have probably seen his writing before and uh, just going to have a quick chat to him today, um, learn a bit more about it. Um, thanks for joining us, Gary. Oh, thanks for having me. So, Gary, do you want to um, tell our, uh, our readers or our watchers um, a little bit about yourself and, and your blog? Uh, basically, my blog covers my travels around the world. I've been traveling around the world nonstop since 2007. During that time, I've been to over 160 different countries and territories around the world, all seven continents. Uh, just 2014 alone, I've been to 25 different countries. I suppose 26 now if you want to count Bermuda, where I am right now. Um, I actually started this year, New Year's Day, I was in Sydney. I uh, got to see the fireworks in Sydney Harbor, and I spent most of the uh, of the year in Africa. Uh, I visited a ton of countries in Africa and then flew back to the United States, and now I'm just sort of relaxing on Bermuda for a couple of days. Sounds good. You must, uh, you must suffer from a bit of jet lag during the year. Uh, actually, I didn't fly this much this year. I spent most of my time on uh, either driving or on ships. Okay, great. So, um, so Gary, I read that you sold your business way back in 1998. Um, what made you decide to do that? Was it, um, was it your intention to travel, or was it? Uh, how, how did that sort of happen? How did you make that decision? Well, it was an internet company, and I knew that the valuations were ridiculously high. And when I had an offer for the company, I sold it. Uh, but the idea for traveling didn't come till many years later. Um, I had. Uh, after I sold the company, the, the company I, I sold it to sent me on an around-the-world trip to talk to some of their offices, and that was the first time I had ever really traveled internationally to any significant extent, and I really enjoyed it, and several years later, actually, it turned out to be like five or six years later, uh, I had the idea of just selling my house and traveling around the world for a year or two, and that's become seven. Great. So in your in your seven years of travel and many, many countries visited. Um, are there any places you haven't been yet that you've got uh, plans or that you'd like to visit someday? Oh, there's lots of places. I haven't been to India yet. I haven't been to Russia. I haven't been to mainland China. I haven't been to Brazil. Uh, a lot of big countries. I've been to a lot of tiny ones, but I haven't been to a lot of the big ones. Yeah, that's interesting. I guess um, most people would sort of do it the other way, you know, go to the big popular destinations first. Um, so yeah, that's that's interesting. Do you have a passion for visiting the the more out of the way places? I guess. Oh yeah, I think they're always the more interesting uh, place I'm at right now, the island of Bermuda. Fifty thousand people live here uh, in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, it's a British territory, but actually closer to the United States than it is anywhere else. And uh, I was in the island of Saint Helena earlier this year. It takes five days by ship to get to the island. Five days to get back. And when you're there, you're pretty much stuck. They don't even have an airport on the island. Wow. And so you, so when you're traveling, do you basically live in hotels or hostels? And, and how long do you usually stay in, in one place? Hotels, hostels, guest houses, apartments, you name it. So I've stayed everywhere, and it depends. You know, sometimes I'll just be visiting a place for one night. Sometimes I'll stay several weeks. Yeah, great. Do you have a um, a typical itinerary for when you visit a place? Are there certain things that you you like to do, or certain things to get your bearings when you get there? Uh, first thing I usually do is I just go walk around the block, uh, whatever the hotel is I'm staying at. Just try to learn what the layout is in the immediate vicinity around where I'm staying. And then from there, it depends. It completely depends on what the city is like I'm staying in. It depends if it's near the ocean or if it's landlocked. Um, I usually like to take pictures. I like to visit UNESCO World Heritage Sites. And so those are usually a priority if there are things like that um, in the vicinity. Yeah. And you mentioned, um, you know, this year particularly, you haven't done a lot of air travel. It's been um, by land. So um, have you? how do you do that? Do you ever rent a car anywhere, or do you get public transport, or what's your, uh, what's your typical overland travel? Again, it depends. Uh, this year I did two big road trips where I just rented a car in South Africa. Um, I've done several big road trips in Australia. I drove from Darwin to Perth, and then I drove from Melbourne all the way up to Cairns. Uh, both times I just rented a car. Yep. 
great. It's uh, one of the best places to, to see things, I think. I did a similar trip um, just over the new year from Brisbane here down to Sydney and back. And uh, yeah, you certainly get to see a lot of things that you don't if you just, I guess, fly from one destination to another. Have you um, have you ever hired a, a motorhome or an RV or camper van, depending on what you want to call it, um, and stayed in that instead of staying in a, in a hotel? Yeah, I've, I rented a camper van when I was in Australia, and I also did it when I was in New Zealand. Uh, but other than that, I've never like gotten a full-blown RV or anything. Yeah. I think um, the South Island of New Zealand is, is basically covered in camper vans everywhere you go. It's a good good place to see uh, see the country. Yeah, it was a, it was, it's a great place to do it, and Australia as well. Uh, you know, there's a lot of ground to cover in Australia, and I think like the United States, it's really best to uh, see it on the ground. Yep. So uh, on a more personal note, Gary, we'd, <laughs> we've done some digging to try and find out a bit more about you, and um, learnt that you're, you're a big movie buff, and you've got about 700 DVDs. Um, so an, a, a uh, question from left field, if your life had to be made into a movie, what title would you give it, and would you have a, an actor in mind that would be good to play yourself? Um, I'd probably just call it Everything Everywhere, which is the name of the website. I think that makes yep. sense. And uh, the actor, I don't know, uh, probably someone who's well-traveled, maybe like uh, Edward Norton Jr. or Henry Rollins. Yeah, <laughs> excellent. And um, we've actually uh, recently we were talking to Chris Christensen um, before, and um, I noticed that you've worked together before on on this week in travel. Um, so how how long have you known Chris for, and how did you get in contact with him? I met well. I met. I found Chris online back in two thousand eight because I was listening to his podcast and. We began doing This Week in Travel in 2009. Uh, we met at the very first TBEX conference in Chicago, and we've been doing it ever since with our co-host, uh, Jen Leo. Although, yeah. I must say, it's not every week <laughs> that we put it yeah. out just because of our travel <laughs> schedules. Um, yeah. So yeah, we've been doing it that long. Great. And uh, recently saw... So, um, that you posted an April Fool's article, I'm not sure if it was this year's or, or a previous one, about marrying a female, and it uh, caused a bit of uh, interest and controversy. Do you do you try and do uh, an April Fool's joke every year? Or? Yeah, I do. That was back in 2010, and I was in uh, Bangkok, and so I posted this thing about how I got drunk one night and married a lady boy. And, it, you know, to this day... There are still, I mean, you read the comments, and it's very clear. Everybody's laughing, and I put all sorts of references to April Fool's and whatnot in it. There are still people that don't get it's a joke. And so every year, uh, I did one where I got kicked out of the United Kingdom because I said Prince Charles looked like a horse. Um, one was the, they were going to, Virgin Galactic was creating a new program for bloggers to send into space. Um, one, one year I said that all my traveling was actually a fake, that I really was a 400-pound man who lived in Alabama, and I was just making everything up. So, yeah. So maybe, uh, maybe you're not the real Gary. <laughs> well, video, it's harder to fake that. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Um, so, Gary, you recently released uh, an e-book called Five Years um, in 100 Photos or 1,000 Photos, um, and I noticed your... 100 Photos. 100 Photos, yeah. And you're, um, I think one of the best things about following you on, on your blog or on social media is, is the amazing photos that you take. Um, was, there, was there one in creating that book that was the most difficult shot you took? Um, I don't know about difficult. Uh, you know, I, you I've taken a... some from hanging out of helicopters. Um, I think there's a couple in there that I took on the Great Barrier Reef. I actually got to be an underwater photographer for a day. Uh, there's a professional photographer, underwater photographer, who had uh, some equipment that I could use. So I went diving with him for a day. Um, I've taken photos in caves, uh, moving trains, you name it. Do you um, have a, um, a favorite photo of all time? No. I've taken... I, it's got to be closing in on a half million photos. 
over the last seven years. Uh, I, I have, you know, they, they come and go. I have ones that I took. I took one recently uh, in Sierra Leone. Uh, it was a picture of a fire dancer, and he had a stick in his mouth that was on fire, and he had another stick that he was rubbing on his body and his eyes. just had this maniacal look. He was staring right at me. And that's probably my, my favorite one from this year. Yeah. But it, it always changes. Great. Do you have any, um, any tips for would-be travel photographers to get a, a great photo? Travel. You know, the, you, can, you can get really technical about a lot of photography things, and a lot of people do that, but at the end of the day, um, you've got to put yourself in front of beautiful things. And the best you can't take a picture of the Taj Mahal or the Sydney Opera House unless you go to those places. And just being there is, you know, that's, that's 80% of it. Everything yeah. else is kind of details. So just get out and start exploring. Great. And um, so your blog obviously is a huge success, but um, some people may not know it was named one of the top 25 blogs in the world in 2010 by Time Magazine. Um, if you feel like sharing any more secrets um, for any people that are starting out um, with their own travel blog, do you have any, any tips for that? Uh, be consistent. So I post a photo every day, and I've done that now for almost seven years, posting a photo every day on my website. Uh, focused on quality. Uh, you, you can't just put out stuff for the heck of it. I went from buying a camera that I didn't even know how to work. You know, I knew nothing about photography, and this year I was named the Travel Photographer of the Year uh, in North America. So I like to think that the quality has something to do with it. The other thing is don't expect success overnight. Uh, it's just not going to happen. It takes years to build up an audience and a following. And it's, it's just not something that's going to happen in a couple months. Yeah. So I guess find a niche, a niche that you love, and then uh, be consistent and don't give up. Just keep at it. Yep. Great. And so um, I guess the photography is, is one thing. Um, is there anything else you think makes your blog different from other travel blogs? Um, and what else can, uh, can readers expect? I travel a lot. I travel a lot, a lot more than most bloggers. Like I said, I've been in 25 countries already this year. I was in 44 last year. So I'm constantly on the road. I'm constantly looking for new places to visit. Um, you know, I had a couple days where I had nothing scheduled, so I took a flight from New York to, the, to Bermuda because I'd never been here before. Uh, and I think you constantly have to be out exploring and adventuring in order to have content that people will be interested in following. So what else can uh, can readers or followers expect from your blog in the future? Uh, over the next couple of months, I'm going to be under uh, taking a road trip through northern Canada. I'll be driving all the way up to the Northwest Territories, uh, visiting the Haunty National Park, and that should take me the better part of the summer here in the northern hemisphere. And then in the uh, September through December, I'll probably be in Europe for most of the time, mainly working but doing some side trips. Great. We'll look forward to uh, keep an eye out and, and have a read of that. that would be fantastic. Thanks very much for joining us today, Gary, and um, we'll pop all your details, your, your blog and social profiles to follow in the, um, in the comments below. Okay. Well, thanks for having me. Auto-Modus. Auto-Modus.